In this video, I'll be working on building up the basic features of my rectangle rendering. The features I want are rounded corners, outlines, and color gradients. To do all of this, I'm going to be using sine distance functions to implement the effects. I'm not going to go over the details of the math in particular, but I'll explain what a sine distance function is at a high level to at least give you that much of an idea. And if you want to learn more, I'll put a couple of links in the description for a couple of useful resources on how to get used to this idea about sine distance function and the specific math that you can use to get different shapes and stuff out of that. All right, with that, let's get started. The very first step is to work out the formula for my sine distance function. A sine distance function is a function that takes in a point in some space, in this case a two-dimensional space, and returns or gives back a real number. The function gives us two key pieces of information. The first is the measure of the distance from the point you put into the function to some shape. So for example, if the point you put in is 10 units away from the edge of the shape, then the magnitude given by the function will be 10. Second, the function tells us whether the point we put into it is inside of the shape or outside of the shape. Points on the inside of the shape are negative values, and points on the outside of the shape give positive values. Points that are exactly on the edge give a value of zero. So, since I want rounded rectangles, I need a formula for the sine distance to a rounded rectangle. Once I have that, I have to compute that in my fragment shader. And what I can do is use the sine distance that I get back from the function to determine which pixels to fill and which ones not to. If I want to make a rounded rectangle appear on the screen, I just fill in all of the pixels where the sine distance is zero or less than zero. In order to avoid really pixely looking curves around the cor rounded corners, we want to use a smooth step so we don't have just pixels that are fully filled and pixels that are empty, but around the edge there where the value is zero, we smoothly go from treating a pixel as f fully filled to completely empty so that you know pixels can get that nice anti-aliasing that makes a curve not look blocky. After I've got the first pass of the sine distance function working, I want to equip the shader real quick with a view transform so that when I send primitive coordinates to my shader program, I can send them in pixel space instead of having to write everything in OpenGL's normalized coordinate space. Here I also took a bit of time to experiment with my blend settings to make sure I'm actually getting an alpha effect the way I think I am. Okay, now I'm going to actually add in those rounded corners I've been planning on. So in order to do that, I need a version of a sine distance function that returns Euclidean distances. Well, the one I hacked together so far doesn't actually work that way. If I only cared about putting the edge in the right place, getting the Euclidean distance doesn't matter. And that's kind of what I did. The, the zeros are in the right spot, but the, and the positives and negatives are in the right spot, but the magnitudes are still wrong. To get a Euclidean distance, I need a better formula. And with the Euclidean distance, things like rounding and outlining will actually work as expected. Expected. So to get that right, I spent a little bit of time trying to think of how I might do it, but I decided to go look up another example of this because programming these functions is a bit difficult. They're, they're sort of a mix between mathematical logic and programming logic where you're trying to avoid doing too many extra pieces of logic. And after they've been boiled down to something really, really simple, there's just usually a few expressions you put together, but they don't mean a lot to us as humans. They're kind of opaque and difficult to figure out and opaque and difficult to reason through. And if you don't use one of those tight expressions, you end up doing way too much computation work to figure out the same value that the small expression can figure out. So instead of trying to figure it out from scratch, I went and looked up Ryan Flurry's blog where I know he wrote a post about this particular sine distance function and used that as my guide to figure out the details that I need to get right. So I'm going to break down real quick what's in this formula. It's not a full explanation of the formula, but it does have a couple of terms in there that once you understand how to interpret them, it gets a little easier to figure out the rest of what it means. So the term I labeled A is what I call the negative part. It computes the negative Euclidean distance for any point that is inside the rectangle. 
and for points that are outside of the rectangle, it's uh, always zero. So this doesn't give you the full Euclidean sine distance. It only gives you the negative to zero part. Then the B term gives you the zero to positive part. It computes the positive Euclidean distance for any point that is outside of the rectangle. And for points inside of the rectangle, the B part is always zero. So when you add A and B together, you now get the full sine distance that we want. So once we have that figured out, all we have to do to make it rounded is take the existing function and subtract out the radius. I'm not going to go over in detail like an intuitive explanation of why this works, but if you go and look around at some of the resources I've given already, you'll see that this is the way that they're doing it, and they might even give you some pictures that help you understand why this works. So another way to learn about that is to play with it yourself or to find other ways to you know draw a picture of it for yourself, however you need to explore it. But the way this trick works is you have a shape already and you want to make Make it rounded you just subtract the radius of rounding you want to apply and now you have a new sine distance function with rounding it's pretty cool To finish off my rounded rectangles, I want to add a concept of softness. The version Ryan gives on his blog post uses this concept to create sh shapes with softer edges. I don't exactly want to do, do that much with it. I'm not planning on making blurry shapes, but I do want to avoid the pixely looking curves and I want to be able to use this for anti-aliasing. And I think that I'm going to need something like this idea of softness just to get the anti-aliasing right. But I probably can get away with a small fixed softness rather than a variable softness. So I take what he's got and I toy with it and fiddle with it to try to make it fit my exact purposes and since I'm just looking for a particular effect I just toy with it a little bit until I'm happy with it and then I'm moving on. I've got rounded rectangles now, but they all have the same fixed roundness. So next I update my shaders to get the roundness from a per rectangle attribute that I can send as part of the vertex data from the CPU side. Next up, I want to be able to render rectangle outlines, and I want to be able to set those outlines to have an arbitrary thickness, and I want them to mix nicely with the rounding I've already set up so that I can create re rounded rectangle outlines. To make this work, I'm going to need to adjust how I'm using the sine distance function, and the way I'm adjusting it is with something I call a distance response curve. So, so far what I've been doing is filling in any pixel with a negative distance. But now what I want to do is say that if a pixel gets too negative, then it's too far away from the edge, and then so it shouldn't be filled either. What I can do is if a pixel's distance is more negative than the thickness I want for my outline, then that's a pixel that's quote unquote too negative, and it doesn't get filled in any more than the pixels totally outside of the shape get filled in. So what I do is I work out a formula for my distance response curve. Basically what I want is to be able to be able to put in a sign distance and get back a number between 0 and 1 that says how strong I should fill in a pixel at that distance. One nice feature of this setup is that if I want a solid rectangle, I'll be able to just put in a really large thickness and my sign distance or my distance response curve will automatically just return 1 for all possible negative distances and so I'm right back to a solid rectangle. No extra code paths introduced to make outlines different from solids.
Here I've gotten pretty confused about why the thickness I'm seeing is not as thick as I expect. So I spent a little while debugging and I realized that the view coordinate transform that I set up earlier was actually squishing everything to half the size I was expecting. So when I figure that out and fix it, everything looks like I was hoping for and we're good to go. The last thing I want to do on this pass is add in my color gradients. This part is not going to be so fancy, it's just going to be two colors, so eight floats total added to each rectangle. One color for the top of the rectangle, one color for the bottom of the rectangle, and the fragment shader will blend between them. Later on I might decide to change some of the details here, I might make it more efficient by passing colors as U32s instead of as four floats, that would save us four, four bytes times three slots, so uh, 12 bytes for each color that we send. I might also want to add the ability to rotate the gradient so that it can run from left to right instead of from top to bottom. So, you know, there's a lot of ideas I might get into to further extend the effects we can get here. Another cool idea that I don't have, it's not about the color gradients, but about the rounding, is I can only round all of the corners the same way, but it might be better if I could send down four separate radiuses, one for each corner of the rectangle. So there's a lot of possibilities here for things we could do even better if we could do another pass and add more features, but I'm pretty happy with with landing on rounded rectangles with outlining and a top to bottom gradient for now. And with that, I've got all the basic features for rectangle rendering that I'm going to set up for this renderer on this particular arc. Next time, we're going to dig into how I want to equip the system with text rendering. So see you then.